Video idea show that the absolute value is continuous. Sure. Here's a picture. It's continuous. Done. Of course, I'm just kidding. Of course, we will have to do this rigorously, and of course, we'll be using some definitions. Here's my claim. f of x is equal to absolute value of x is continuous on R, meaning this is true for all real number x. First, we will have to know what makes a function continuous, and here is the definition. I will just write the function f is continuous, and right here we have to mention continuous as some value, so I'll just say add a. This means that all we have to do is to check the limit as x approaching a of the function, the limit is equal to the value of the function at a. So as you can see, if you have a continuous function at a, you can just plug in a into the function and you get the limit, which is very nice. And right here, we're trying to show that this is true for all a in the real number, so that we can show absolute value of x is always continuous. But now, what's this? This is the limit. And how do we show a limit is true? we will have to use the epsilon delta definition. So here's another definition that I would like to review with you guys. If we have the limit as x approaching some number a of a function, let's say this right here is equal to some number l, then this means that, here we go, for all epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero such that, and here's the idea, for the limit to be true, we want if x is really, really close to a, how close things is, is we have to measure the distance. And in math, to measure distance, we use absolute value. So we just have to do absolute value, and we do x minus a. This represents the distance between x and a. I want it to be close, so that means I want the distance to be small. How small here, though? Less than delta. Right here, there's a small touch. We don't need x to be the same as a. To indicate that, we just need to say this absolute value is greater than 0. So x is not equal to a. Now, if this happens, then we want the function to be really, really close to l. And in fact, you will see that this is where we use the epsilon. So we just write absolute value of the function minus the l is less than epsilon. Notice this right here is for all epsilon greater than zero. So the idea is that you can make the function as close to the limit as possible, any epsilon distance, and you will always be able to find a delta to make this true. For more examples on this, I do have a video, 24 limit problems, so definitely check that out. Now, this is how we are going to start off with the proof. You always write P here first. To show this is continuous on R means any value in the set of real numbers. We have to make sure A is just any real number first. So I'm going to begin by saying that A being a real number. And I will show that the function is continuous for all is, is continuous at all real numbers, and will be done. Now, to show this, pay attention to for all there is 6, if, then. This is an if-then statement. You can use the four keyword approach. Here we go. When you see for all, you can start off by saying given, and just write it down, given epsilon greater than 0. Next, when you see there exists, this is something that you have to find. This is something that you have to state. You can say, choose. Write down delta, but in fact, you don't know what delta is yet. We don't know what we have to choose delta to be equal to what yet. A lot of people get stuck right here because they don't know what delta is yet. I don't know what it is yet. But the important thing is that even though you don't know, move on. Move on, and then you can come back to this right here later on. Don't worry about it. So, so far, so good. And then this right here is a starting of the if, right? So you can just say suppose, because this is a condition that we can use later on. Just write it down. 
So I'll just say this right here. Now, suppose you have this. What you want to do is you want to show that this is true, but you don't know if this is true yet. So you will have to check it or you have to you know, show it, right? You're going to show that absolute value of the function minus the limit that you're trying to show. Remember, we're trying to show continuous. So this is the L that we are trying to show, right? So we write F of F of A. Then we are going to do some algebra. We can't really do too much though because f of x, we can just put that down right here. f of a, we just put a in here. Okay, so this is what we have. So far so good, but what do we do to continue? Notice this is a difference of two absolute values. Here, we can use the reverse version of the triangle inequality. Let me review that with you guys. This is the usual version of the triangle inequality, which says if you give me any two real numbers, let's say x and y, compare absolute value of x plus y versus absolute value of x plus absolute value of y. Which side is bigger? The answer is the right hand side, because you can just say 5 and negative 1, for example. The left hand side will give you 4, but the right hand side will give you 6. However, could both sides be equal? Yes, because if you have both of them being positive or both of them being negative, let's say 5 and 1, then you get 6 is equal to 6. So this is less than or equal to that. Now, if you have a minus here, then you should be looking for the reverse version of the triangle inequality. Pretty much the same idea. Compare absolute value of x, but this time it's a minus here. And we have absolute value of x minus absolute value of y. Now, which side is bigger? The answer is the left hand side now, because if you have 5 and negative 1, if that's the case, the left hand side will be 6, but the right hand side will be 4. So it'd be like this. And they could also be equal. So this is bigger than or equal to that. So as you can see, on the inside here, we can just replace that with this idea here. Here we have absolute value of x minus absolute value of a. This is going to be less than or equal to absolute value of x minus a. And then of course we should still have an absolute value on the outside, but of course doesn't really matter anymore. You can get rid of that. So this absolute value doesn't matter. I'll just write this as equal to absolute value of x minus a. And this is very nice because we have this right here. And we know that it's less than delta. This is what we can use because that's what we are supposed to have. So write that down. Now, keep in mind, we're trying to show this is less than epsilon at the very end. Right here, we have this being less than delta. And then the key right here is that we haven't chosen what delta is equal to. Well, imagine if delta is the same as epsilon, that would be so nice, isn't it? And remember, given epsilon is greater than zero, so you can choose the delta based on this epsilon. So this is okay. We see this is less than delta, but that's the same as epsilon. We can just replace that right here. So as you can see, we have successfully shown that this expression is less than epsilon, which satisfies the definition. And then since a is just any real numbers, and we have shown that this right here is the limit as x approaching a of the function, it's equal to f of a, and this is true for all a, which says f is continuous. And we're done. We can put box and shade in.